Hello everyone. My name is Emiran Demira and I am from Bilkent University. I am a freshman student in the department Electrical and Electronics Engineering. Today, in this video, I am going to explain you my experiment of Hooke's Law. In the Hooke's Law, it explains how springs apply a force when they are either extended or compressed. As shown in the figure, we can see that F equals minus Kx. K is the spring constant and X is the displacement about the equilibrium position. In this experiment, we will check whether K stays consistent or changes through different situations. If we hang an object with mass M on a spring in a vertical position, the net force of the object would be as shown. And if we want the object to be stationary, we should put the object in a position where the net force is zero. As shown in the figure, the equilibrium position is mg over k. The magnitude of the equilibrium position is the length difference. It is given as the difference of length of the spring between where there is mass hanged and there isn't. Thus, we can measure k as mg over delta l. If the object was not stationary, it would have a motion that is a simple harmonic motion. This motion's period would be 2 pi square root of m over k. Therefore, we found another way of calculating k, where we can calculate it as 4 pi squared m over t squared. First, we measure the equilibrium length of the spring, where there is no mass hanged. After that, we hang a mass to the spring and wait for it to stop. After it stops, we measure the length, that is the stationary length. We measure the stationary length with different masses to have a variety of results. After measuring the length differences of the mass, we let the mass oscillate with the spring and measure 10 periods, then divide the results by 10 to have a better result. In our experiment, we pick these masses and this was the equilibrium length of our spring. We had these as the length differences. This is the table of the period values. We repeated the process 10 times for each mass and took the average of the period values to have a better result. At the end we had these results for the spring constant. To have a better understanding of the consistency of the spring, we are gonna use this standard deviation equation. It's gonna show how much the spring constant spread. These were our standard deviation results. You can see that dynamic situation spread nearly double the static situation. This is because of the increase of the uncertainty in the dynamic situation. Considering the errors, we can say that our results were pretty consistent.